Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So today's video is going to be an introduction to SIMD or Single Instruction Multiple Data. So SIMD forms a really important part of modern performance programming. Flynn's taxonomy splits computing architecture into four different general types. Single instruction, single data, and that's exactly the same as regular scalar programming. Yeah, you supply one variable and you do one uh, operation on it, say addition or subtraction. The next, we've got single instruction multiple data, or SIMD, which is the topic of the video today. So we supply one instruction, but it's executed on lots of different data elements at once. Then we have multiple instruction and single data, which is not often used, but uh, sometimes it's used for error detection and things like that. And finally, we have MIMD or MIMD, multiple instruction and multiple data. And an example of MIMD is a modern multi-core CPU where each core can execute different instructions on different data at the same time. Okay, so where does SIMD come from and multi-core programming? Well, it all comes from the need for performance. CPUs back in the 1980s and the 1990s were improving really, really quickly in terms of uh, their core clock speeds. So for instance, we've got the uh, 8086 or 8086, which was capable of performing about 4.77 million operations per second. Uh, a few years later, this was 1996, the K6 from AMD, uh, that was capable of performing about 133 million operations per second. And then as another example, we had the uh, Pentium 4, which was released in about the year 2000, and that was capable of executing 3.8 billion operations per second. So you can see that the speed of CPUs throughout the 1980s and the 1990s, the speed was increasing just dramatically. But we hit a bit of a bottleneck. So increasing clock speeds actually requires exponential power. So enthusiasts nowadays will often use things like liquid nitrogen to cool their CPUs so that they can push the clock cycle or the core cycle counts um, a little bit higher. But even with uh, interesting cooling techniques like uh, liquid nitrogen, there's definitely uh, limits to the core clock speeds that we can actually push uh, CPUs before it becomes completely impractical. So instead of improving the core clock speeds, so what CPU manufacturers started to do was improve the parallelism of CPUs. So they started doing this in a couple of ways. One way was that they started including more than one core on the die. So a CPU could actually contain say two or four or eight uh, processing units called cores and this leads to really good uh, performance in uh, modern multi-threaded applications but the other way that CPU manufacturers have been in improving performance with parallelism is to include SIMD units so they've been including more powerful SIMD units and SIMD units with larger vectors so more processing power Okay, let's have a bit of a look at exactly what SIMD is. So here we have a little illustration of, first of all, scalar or normal addition. Okay, so scalar just means one data element. This is the regular way that we tend to code uh, C++ or many other languages. So you can see here in scalar that if we add the A variable or the left variable to the B variable or the right variable, we end up with the C variable. Fair enough, but we're only performing one operation there. So that's a scalar operation. But if we have a look at SIMD, what you'll see is we provide the same instruction, which is addition, but the operation is performed on four elements at once. So we're performing four little additions here at once. Now the operation is the same between all of the objects. It's addition. We've only provided one operation here or one instruction, but it's occurring on multiple data. Yeah, so this is where the acronym comes from, SIMD. Single Instruction Multiple Data. So modern optimizing C++ compilers actually have specifications for various SIMD instruction sets. Often the compiler is able to auto vectorize for us, or in other words, it can use these SIMD instruction sets behind the scenes and greatly improve the performance for us. Another option for C++ compilers is x86 intrinsics. So the intrinsics actually offer a one-to-one -one correspondence to the hardware instructions in much the same way as assembly, uh, but they also also allow us to specify these hardware instructions without actually jumping over to assembly. Okay, but SIMD and uh, x64 assembly go hand in hand. SIMD programming is very, very natural part of assembly language.
Okay, here we have an introduction to the SIMD instruction sets currently in X64 CPUs. SSE actually came out in a whole bunch of different uh, generations. Beginning with SSE 1 from 1999, SSE 1 was designed for single precision floating point arithmetic, and later on in the year 2000, SSE 2 was added. And in SSE 2, the instruction set was greatly improved, and we could now do double precision floating point operations as well as integer. Then SSE 3 came out in two generations. Uh, the first generation offered a few horizontal operations. Uh, we will introduce horizontal operations and all of this sort of stuff as we explore the instruction sets themselves. Uh, then the extension to SSE 3 actually added more horizontal operations. And SSE 4 actually came out in a whole bunch of generations as well. So SSE4 contained uh, a mixture of different operations. We've got various string operations, various blend operations, just miscellaneous uh, operations. Then finally, in 2011, we got uh, AVX. Now, AVX offered operations on single precision and double precision floats. The vector size was actually doubled to 256 bits. So it was a really important step. Uh, AVX2 came out in about 2016, and AVX2 actually added the integer operations to the uh, AVX instruction set. Yeah, so AVX1 wasn't actually capable of doing most of the integer operations. Finally, there's many, many versions of AVX512. So the release of AVX512 has really become confused and staggered, but AVX512, uh, once again, the vector size doubled to 512 bits, and the instructions involved in AVX 512 are various or miscellaneous, general purpose. Uh, little mention to MMX. So MMX was actually the first SIMD instruction set that x86 CPUs got. Uh, we got that way back with the Pentium MMX in 1997, but the instruction set is largely considered obsolete nowadays. Okay, so little MMX back in 1999 came out with eight registers, and the names of those registers were MM0, MM1, MM2, MM3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so just MM and then a number from 0 to 7. So there's eight registers there for MMX. Uh, SSE came out and it doubled the register count. This is only in 64-bit mode. If you are coding in 32-bit mode, then you've still got eight SSE registers. The names of the SSE registers are XMM0 all the way up to XMM15. AVX has 16 registers. The names are YMM0 all the way up to YMM15. AVX512 actually increased that register count all the way up to 32. So there's a much larger register file there. So the names of the AVX512 registers are ZMM0 all the way up to ZMM31. Something else to be aware of, if you are programming for an AVX512 capable CPU, you'll actually get um, 32 SSE registers as well and 32 uh, AVX registers as well. So all of these registers are aliased to each other. So except for MMX, these registers are actually aliased to each other. So the low half of the AVX registers is actually the 128-bit SSE registers. And likewise, the low half of the AVX512 registers is actually the 256-bit AVX registers. So initially, we'll start out with just a little recap of the basic data types. So here we have a byte, that's eight bits worth of data, ranges from zero to 255. And beside that, we have a short int or a word. Beside that, we have a D word, which is four bytes wide. And beside that, we have a 64-bit word, which is eight bytes wide, integers still. And of course, we've got the floating point data types. This is a single precision floating point value just here. That's four bytes wide. And beside that, we have the eight byte double precision floating point. So that's all of the normal data types available to a modern X64 CPU. Yeah, everything from bytes all the way up to Q words. And then we've got the two floating point data types. But if we compare the sizes of those to some of these SIMD registers which operate on multiple data types at once, start with SSE. So SSE is one of the most common SIMD instruction sets currently available. Uh, it's virtually available on all uh, X64 CPUs at the moment. 
and SSE contains 128 bit vectors. So that 128 bits can be split up in lots of different ways. So if we fill our vectors with bytes, then you could potentially perform 16 operations at once using SSE. Uh, another option is words. So 128 bits of data will actually fit eight words at once. So we could do eight operations on different words at the same time using SSE. Uh, or we could perform four operations on D words, which is ints, in other words, in C++. Uh, we could do two operations on 64-bit Q words. So Q words are long, long in C++. Uh, alternatively, uh, SSE also provides the options to do floating point arithmetic. So we could do up to four single precision floating point operations at once or two double precision floating point operations at once. So the SSE registers, as you can see from that, are really, really flexible. Yeah, you can perform operations on anything from bytes all the way up to Q words or long longs and also floating point. But SSE is fairly old. So the next instruction set to come along was AVX. AVX registers are double the size of SSE. These registers are 256 bits wide, which means that we can perform up to 32 operations on bytes at once. We can perform 16 operations on short integers. We can perform eight operations on D words or four operations on long longs or Q words. So using floating point, we could do up to eight operations on single precision floating point numbers and up to four operations on double precision floating point at once. But recently, X64 CPUs got another big upgrade. This was AVX512. So as the name suggests, AVX512 actually contains vectors of 512 bits. So using AVX512, we can perform up to 64 byte operations at once. We could perform 32 operations on short integers. We could perform 16 operations on D words or ints. We could perform eight operations on 64 bit integers, um, 16 operations on single precision floats and eight operations on double precision floats. Now we have a bit of an illustration of the size of these things all together. So you can see there that the doubling in size of the vector registers really allows for gigantic leaps in processing power. Okay, so we'll finish up with a couple of demonstrations. So this first little demonstration here I want to show, this is actually intrinsics. So this is not assembly at all, uh, but this instruction down here is our SIMD instruction with the rather catchy name underscore mm, 256 add PD. So all this is going to do is add the values of two little uh, double precision vectors. Each of these vectors contains four numbers. So the A vector contains 0, 1, 2, 3, and the B vector contains 2, 4, 6, 8. And when we add those together SIMD style, what's actually going to happen is that corresponding elements will be added together. And the result just here will be stored in the C vector. So 0 plus 2, 1 plus 4, 2 plus 6, and 3 plus 8. That should give us our four little values. So if we just put a breakpoint right there on that line just there, and we might actually change over to debug since we want to make sure this is not actually skipped. Okay, let's hit run and see what happens. Okay, so we've got our watch window open. I might just add a watch to this C vector just here and we can get a bit of an idea of how these things look in the watch windows. So this is actually the C++ intrinsic version of an AVX register containing four doubles. So the C vector starts out with just garbage in it. Uh, but as I hit F10 to step over that instruction, we see that the four additions have occurred. So we've got 0 plus 2 in the first element or element number 0 of our C vector. Then we've got 1 plus 4 gives you 5 as the second element. Then we've got 2 plus 6, which gives you 8 as the third element. And finally, we've got 3 plus 8, which gives you 11 in the C vector. So most of the SIMD instruction sets and instructions actually have intrinsic versions in C++. So this is just an example of one particular instruction. Uh, do be careful that you've got to include intrin.h at the top of your file if you hope to use intrinsics. Uh, okay, but that's enough about C++. Let's have a bit of a look at how to do this stuff in assembly. So 
right here I've just got a 64-bit app. There's nothing much doing in it. This main just calls the function test simd. And if we jump over here to assembly, this is where we can test out our simd instructions. Okay, so for the first example, what we're gonna do is add two integer vectors together using uh, SSE instructions. So right at the top of this little assembly program, I've got um, two little vectors defined called my integers one and my integers two. And I've used DD there to uh, define D words, or in other words, uh, integers or 32-bit ints. And my first vector has zero, one, two, three in it. And my second vector has five, 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 five. Mov DQU will actually move uh, my integers one into XMM zero just here. And the second Mov DQU instruction will move my integers two into XMM one. Then we can have a go at calling um, one of the AVX instructions. So P add D. XMM zero, XMM one. Whoops, I typed XMM 90. How many registers do you think we've got? Let's have a bit of a break point there and we'll run through and see what this stuff looks like. We'll add a watch to XMM zero and XMM one. Okay, so what the P add D instruction does, it adds the corresponding elements from each of the two vectors. Uh, XMM0 and XMM1, and it stores the result in that first vector. So what we should see in XMM0 is 5 plus 0, 5 plus 1, 5 plus 2, and then 5 plus 3 on the end. If we have a look down here at the M128 underscore U32 section, what that's telling us there is the 32-bit unsigned integer values. So 0, 1, 2, 3 is what we've got inside our vector. Uh, likewise, you could look up here, which is the signed integer version, and the readout there tells us 0, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, so this watch window here is telling us if you read the value in the register and you interpret it in certain different ways, uh, it could be interpreted as various different things. Yeah, but for our particular example, we've got uh, integers or D words. Yeah, so we want to look at that line or this one. Okay, so that's XMMO, the SSE register. Let's have a bit of a look here at XMM1. So once again, you get lots and lots of data to look at, uh, but the ones that we're really interested in here, since we actually defined D or defined D words, uh, we're interested in the 32-bit integers. Yeah, so you can see I32 is 5555, that's the signed integers. And if you read the data as unsigned integers, it looks exactly the same, 5555. Okay, so we're gonna execute this instruction. I'll step over with F10, and what you should see is that the values in XMM0 have now changed. So now we've got five, six, seven, eight. And would you believe it? That's actually the exact values that we get when we add the corresponding elements of those two vectors. Yeah, five plus zero gives you five, five plus one gives you six, five plus two gives you seven, and five plus three gives you eight. So that is the add instruction. Let's have a bit of a look at the sub instruction. So it's much the same thing, um, except instead of P add D, the sub instruction is P sub D. So P sub D is gonna subtract the values from the second operand just here, XMM1. It's gonna subtract those from the corresponding elements in the first operand, which is XMM0, and it's gonna store the result in XMM0. So once again, it's not type safe at all if we hit run. Uh, okay, so at the moment in XMM1, uh, we've got zero, one, two, three in signed and unsigned. If we step over the next line, Okay, so if you step over the next line, you'll see that the unsigned or U32 section of this little readout just here has gone to very large um, values. But the one that we really want just here is uh, signed. So we've got negative five, which is zero minus five. We've got negative four, which is one minus five. We've got negative three, which is two minus five. And on the end, we've got negative two, which is three minus five. Okay, so let's have a bit of a look at some floating point. SIMD instruction sets are often really geared towards extremely fast floating points. And uh, let's have a bit of a look at some, some basic uh, SSE SIMD instructions. So at the top in my data segment, I've changed that to real four, which is the same as um, float in C++. So it's single precision floating point numbers, 32 bits. Um, so I've just specified two little arrays or vectors, zero, one, two, three in the first one and seven, six, five, four in the second one. And then down here, my first two instructions um, move those arrays into XMM0 and XMM1. 
Uh, this is actually the mnemonic for move aligned packed singles. Um, the data is aligned. The data segment starts out aligned, but uh, so the integers from the previous example were actually aligned as well. Uh, anyway, we can talk about data alignment later. <laughs> what I'd like to show now is some, some basic uh, arithmetic operations available in SSE. So there's AVX and AVX512 equivalents to these as well, but we can talk about that later. Add PS or add packed singles XMM0, XMM1. Uh, so this is the mnemonic for add packed singles. It's going to add corresponding elements from XMM0 and XMM1, and then it's going to store the result in XMM0. Let's have a bit of a run and see that happen. Okay, so at the moment, if we expand our little XMM0 and we come down to find the 32-bit floats. Uh, okay, so the 32-bit floats are listed right at the very top of that watch window. Uh, so you can see initially 0, 1, 2, 3. If we hit F10, we should get the result of the addition, and we do. So after that add PS, we've got 7, 7, 7, 7 as the elements in our vector. So that's uh, 7 plus 0, 6 plus 1, 5 plus 2, and 4 plus 3. So if we hit stop, uh, okay, so we've got another couple of instructions. We've got uh, sub PS, that's subtract pack singles. Uh, that's much the same as add, except it's going to subtract the corresponding elements from the second operand, this XMM1. Uh, but then we've also got mul PS. So multiplication and division are slightly more complicated for uh, integers than they are for floating point. Mul PS, which multiplies corresponding elements. So it's going to give us 7 times 0, 6 times 1, 5 times 2, and 3 times 4. Let's have a bit of an example of mul PS. Okay, so at the top there, we're looking at 128-bit. Um, that's a F32. We've got 0, 1, 2, 3 in our XMM0 register. If we run through that again, changes magically to 0, 6, 10, 12. Yeah, so I'll just perform the corresponding multiplications there between the elements. Uh, we've also got div PS, which is floating point division. So this is just going to divide each of the corresponding elements. Let's hit run and have a bit of an example. Okay, so once again, we're looking at F32 or 32-bit float. If we run over that line, we get zero. We get, uh, what's that, one-sixth. We get two-fifths and we get three-quarters. Yeah, which is those um, top elements there, or my floats one divided by my floats two. Okay, so the other option in SSE, AVX and AVX512 is not to use uh, packed singles, but to use packed doubles. So those are exactly the same instruction mnemonics. You just have to change a few things around. So for one thing, uh, these will be real eights. So SSE can only deal with two double precision floating point operations at once. So we better reduce the size of our little vectors. So instead of move aligned packed singles, now we want move aligned packed doubles. I don't think this actually makes a change at all to the performance, but there is different instructions for moving packed singles and moving packed doubles. So the addition instruction for packed doubles is similar to the packed singles ones, except instead of um, add PS, we've now got add PD. So let's have a bit of a run, and hopefully we'll get these two double precision additions happening um, simultaneously. Um, all right, so it's the second line here that we want to look at since we're um, reading the data in this uh, XMM0 register as doubles. And the second line says that we've got uh, 0 and 1 as doubles. So we've just got that array just there. So let's run over the next line. Okay, and when we added 0 to 7, we got the 7 just there. And when we added the 1 to the 6, we also got 7. Uh, maybe I could have a bit of a change here of this uh, second value so that they don't both come up as 7. Yeah, so this should give us um, 7 and 11. Yeah, there we go, 7 and 11. Okay, so that's add packed doubles. Uh, we can also do sub packed doubles or sub PD. That's just going to subtract the elements from this second operand, XMM1. And we've also got well, mul PD, which is uh, multiply packed doubles. And then similar to um, singles, we can also do div. Div PD will actually divide the elements from um, the first vector. Yeah, a little demo of div. So at the moment we've got 0 and 5. It should come up with, uh, what, 0 and 5 over 6. Yeah, there you go. 0 and 5 over 6. And that is the end, my friends. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that was an interesting introduction into the amazing world of SIMD, Single Instruction Multiple Data. A thumbs up if you like, share the video, add a comment or support on Patreon. You can go over on Facebook and say hello over there. Most of all, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.